Have you ever stopped to consider just how ridiculous Tony Stark's engineering actually is? We aren't just talking about a flying suit. We are talking about a device that straps a nuclear reactor to a human chest and expects the pilot to survive G-forces that would turn an Olympic athlete into jelly. Today, we're stripping away the movie magic to rank 10 iconic suits based on cold, hard numbers. We're judging power, energy, efficiency, resilience, and cost. We've crunched the numbers to give each suit a tier ranking from F to S. Let's see which armor actually obeys the laws of physics. Let's kick this off with the baseline for everything that followed, the Mark III. This is the classic red and gold suit from the first Iron Man movie, and it sets the standard for what we expect from Stark Tech. When Tony built this, he wasn't thinking about nanotechnology or space travel. He was thinking about solving a very specific atmospheric problem. The Mark III is constructed from a gold titanium alloy. In the real world, titanium is used in aerospace because it has the highest strength to weight ratio of any metal. But alloying it with gold? That's incredibly dense. Gold is heavy, about 70% denser than lead. Tony did this to solve the icing problem encountered at high altitudes, ensuring the suit wouldn't freeze up. While that's great for reliability, it tanks the weight score. This suit is a flying tank, not a fighter jet. In terms of power, the Mark III is solid but primitive. It relies on the Palladium Arc Reactor Mark II, which outputs roughly 3 gigajoules per second. That's enough to power a small city, but the suit's repulsors and flight stabilizers are energy hogs. You get standard flight and repulsor blasts, but you lack the versatility of later models. Then there's the cost. Between the gold content, the private aerospace prototyping, and the fact that Tony destroyed his own garage and several luxury cars testing it, this is expensive hardware. Verdict, power, 6 out of 10, energy, 5 out of 10, resilience, 7 out of 10, cost, 4 out of 10. With a score of 22 out of 40, it lands in tier B. It's the Honda Civic of Iron Man suits. Reliable, but heavy. Now we're going to jump to the other end of the spectrum with the Mark 44, the Hulkbuster. If the Mark III is a Honda Civic, this is a monster truck fueled by burning cash. This suit wasn't designed for efficiency. It was designed for one specific purpose, to beat the Hulk into submission. The Veronica system deploys this suit from a satellite, which is your first clue about the energy consumption. The Hulkbuster is so massive, it can't run on a single arc reactor. It requires multiple cores just to power the hydraulics. We estimate the force output needed to match a Hulk punch is in the tens of thousands of tons. To generate that kind of kinetic energy, the suit burns through power faster than it can generate it. It's the gas guzzler of the MCU. Resilience is off the charts initially. It's built to take a beating from the strongest being on Earth. However, the durability strategy here is ablative. That means parts are designed to break off and be replaced instantly by the hovering supply drone. While that keeps Tony alive, it destroys the cost source. Every second of combat destroys millions of dollars in modular titanium plates, repulsor nodes, and hydraulic pistons. The power capability is a 10, but the lack of agility drags it down. Verdict, power, 9 out of 10. Energy, 2 out of 10. Resilience, 8 out of 10. Cost, 1 out of 10. Averaging 20 out of 40, this hits tier C. It's an absolute unit, but logically, a logistical nightmare. Let's rewind to where it all began, the Mark I. The suit built in a cave with a box of scraps. Nostalgia aside, if we look at this thing purely through the lens of physics and engineering, it is a terrifying death trap for the person inside. Resilience is the biggest issue here. The armor is made from scavenged missile casings and iron. Sure, it stops small arms fire, but notice what's missing, shock absorption. In a modern suit, there's gel layers and padding. In the Mark I, Tony is wearing a leather jacket under sheer metal. When he crashes into the desert sand at terminal velocity after his escape, the kinetic energy transfer would have shattered every bone in his body. He shouldn't have walked away. He should have been poured out of the boots. Power is virtually non-existent. The miniature arc reactor was barely keeping the shrapnel out of his heart, let alone powering a suit. The flamethrowers were chemically fueled, and the flight capability was a one-time solid fuel burn that offered zero steering. It's not a flight suit, it's a human mortar shell. As for cost, you might think it's the cheapest because the materials were stolen. However, in strictly financial terms, it's practically free compared to the gold titanium alloys of the Mark III. Verdict, power, 1 out of 10. Energy, 1 out of 10. Resilience, 2 out of 10. Cost, 10 out of 10. 
With 14 out of 40, this is a hard tier F. It barely works, and the landing gear is your own femur. Scientifically, it's a disaster. Next up is the Mark 42, often called the Prodigal Son. This suit introduced prehensile propulsion technology, meaning each individual piece of the armor has its own flight system and can attach to Tony independently. It's a masterpiece of robotics, but from a structural engineering standpoint, it is a disaster waiting to happen. In engineering, every seam is a weakness. A solid plate is stronger than two plates bolted together. The Mark 42 is entirely seams. This is why we see it shatter into a thousand pieces when it gets hit by a truck in Iron Man 3. It lacks the structural rigidity of the golden titanium alloy because it prioritizes modular assembly. Think about the lag time too. In the movie, we see the pieces fly across the country. That implies a guidance system in every single gauntlet and boot. This is a logistical nightmare for maintenance. If one thruster fails, you are fighting with one leg. Power is high because of the versatility but energy consumption is tricky. Each piece needs its own power cell or a wireless transfer system, which loses massive amounts of energy over distance. And resilience? It's arguably the most fragile suit in the main lineup. It's built for speed and ease of use, not for tanking hits. As for cost, the R&D required to make a neural interface that controls 42 separate flying drones is astronomical. You are paying for the software, not the hardware. Verdict, power, 8 out of 10. Energy, 4 out of 10. Resilience, 3 out of 10. And cost, 2 out of 10. With a total of 17 out of 40, this slides into Tier D. It's a cool party trick, but if you actually need to survive a war zone, you don't want armor that falls apart when you sneeze. Moving into the realm of pure sci-fi, we have the Bleeding Edge, or Model 37. This represents the shift from mechanical engineering to nanotechnology. In the comics and later MCU, this suit is stored inside Tony's body. Let's pause and think about the biology of that. If you store a suit of armor inside your bone marrow or subcutaneous layers, you aren't just carrying extra weight, you are displacing human tissue. The mass conservation law applies here. If the suit weighs 200 pounds, Tony walks around weighing 400 pounds. His knees should be dust. It's basically the T-1000 from Terminator, but with a hero complex. The sheer energy density required to keep those nanobots active would turn a normal human into a radiator. Furthermore, the energy consumption is efficient because it runs directly off the high-yield new element reactor, but the heat dissipation is the real killer. Resilience, however, is nearly infinite. It's self-repairing. If you rip off an arm, the nanobots just grow a new one. Power is limitless because the suit can form any weapon Tony can imagine, from cannons to shields. Cost? It's incalculable. You are rewriting human biology using tech that is centuries ahead of modern science. Verdict? Power? 10 out of 10. Energy? 9 out of 10. Resilience? 10 out of 10. Cost? 1 out of 10. This nets a 30 out of 40 landing in tier S. It breaks the laws of physics so hard it practically becomes magic, making it the most dangerous weapon on Earth. Let's bring it back down to Earth with the Mark V, the suitcase suit from Iron Man 2. This is a favorite for its deployment sequence, but mechanically, it's a compromise. The entire point of the Mark V is portability. It compresses a standard suit into a briefcase form factor. To achieve this, Tony had to sacrifice almost everything that makes Iron Man tough. Think about the hinges to fold a suit that small. You need thousands of micro joints. In engineering, moving parts are failure points. One grain of sand in the wrong gear and your helmet doesn't close, it's a reliability nightmare. Look at the plating. It's not thick gold titanium. It's likely a lightweight steel or single layer titanium mesh. It has to be thin enough to fold like origami. That tanks the resilience score. We saw Whiplash's electric whips tear through it like wet paper. There is no insulation layer, meaning any electrical attack or extreme heat goes straight to the pilot. Power is also significantly reduced. It has repulsors, but it lacks the heavy ordnance, missiles, and sustained flight capabilities of the main line. It's an emergency response unit, not a battle suit. Energy consumption is decent because it runs low power systems, but the battery is likely small to fit the form factor. Cost is high for the miniaturization, but lower than the nanotech suits. Verdict? Power, 4 out of 10. Energy, 6 out of 10. Resilience, 3 out of 10. Cost, 5 out of 10. This averages to 18 out of 40, putting it in Tier D. It's better than no suit, but if you know a fight is coming, you leave the briefcase at home. We arrive at the pinnacle of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the Mark 85. 
If the Mark 50 from Infinity War was the beta test for nanotechnology, this is the fully patched release. In the previous film, we saw Thanos stab through the Mark 50 like it was wet cardboard because the nano layer was too thin. Tony learned his lesson. The Mark 85 uses a denser, layered nanostructure that mimics the musculature of the human body, but with the hardness of the classic gold titanium alloy. It solves the biggest problem with fluid armor, impact dispersion. Instead of just absorbing a hit, it hardens instantly to deflect it. Scientifically, the most impressive stat here is energy management. This suit was capable of channeling the energy of all six Infinity Stones. We are talking about cosmic radiation levels that should have vaporized Tony instantly. The suit's ability to reroute that surge away from his vital organs for even a few seconds implies a superconducting network that defies modern physics. It has the versatility of the bleeding edge, but the raw durability of a tank. However, the cost is astronomical. You are paying for nanotech that can form complex energy shields, lightning refocusers, and life support systems on the fly. It is the most expensive piece of hardware in the MCU, but it gets the job done when the universe is at stake. Verdict, power, 10 out of 10. Energy, 8 out of 10. Resilience, 9 out of 10. Cost, 1 out of 10. With a score of 28 out of 40, it secures a tier S. It's the perfect blend of offense and defense, only limited by the mortal body inside it. Now we're stepping away from the movies and into the weird side of the comics with the Model 50, the Endosim armor. This is what happens when Tony stops caring about ethics and starts looking at alien biology based on the symbiote physiology. Yes, the same species as Venom. This suit is effectively alive. It is a psionic liquid smart metal that hardens on impact. The science here is terrifyingly efficient. Traditional suits have reaction lag. Tony thinks, the computer processes, the servo moves. The endosim is psionically linked to his brain. The lag is zero. The moment he thinks punch, the suit is already moving. That creates a power score that is hard to quantify because it reacts faster than any machine ever could. Resilience is unique because it acts like a non-Newtonian fluid. The harder you hit it, the harder it gets. It doesn't have seams or joints to break. It just flows. However, the energy consumption is the dark horse. It doesn't just run on electricity. It relies on a biological bond. And the cost? You can't buy this at a hardware store. It required extracting elements from a sentient alien species. It's priceless technology, but the ethical cost might be too high for most. It's sleek, it's chrome, and it's deeply unsettling to look at because it moves like mercury rather than metal. Verdict? Power? 10 out of 10. Energy? 9 out of 10. Resilience, 10 out of 10. Cost, 2 out of 10. This terrifying masterpiece hits 31 out of 40, earning a tier S+. It is arguably the most advanced suit Tony ever wore, bridging the gap between man and monster. If the endo suit is the biological nightmare, the model prime is the engineer's dream. This suit was created to solve the I brought the wrong suit problem. Usually Tony has a suit for space, a suit for stealth, and a suit for heavy lifting. The Model Prime is all of them at once. It uses hexagonal scales that can shift their geometry to change the suit's function entirely. From a physics standpoint, this is tessellation engineering on steroids. The scales can expand to increase mass, turning the suit into a Hulkbuster light or contract and change color for stealth operations. It's the ultimate efficiency hack. You don't need 50 suits in the Hall of Armor, you just need one. Resilience is high because the hexagonal structure distributes force evenly across the surface, much like a honeycomb, which is one of the strongest structures in nature. Power is consistently high because it can adapt its weaponry to the threat. Need a cannon? The scales form a cannon. Need a sword? You got it. Energy consumption is optimized because the suit only energizes the scales it is currently using. It's smart energy management. The cost is high due to the complexity of the individual scale robotics, but since it replaces 50 other suits, it's actually a budget saver in the long run. Verdict, power, nine out of 10. Energy, 10 out of 10. Resilience, eight out of 10. Cost, six out of 10. Scoring 33 out of 40, this is the undisputed tier S. It's not the strongest in raw power, but it is the smartest piece of engineering Tony Stark ever built. Finally, we arrive at the absolute ceiling of Tony Stark's engineering career, the God Buster, or Model 63. If the Mark I was biology fighting physics, the God Buster is physics giving up and going home. Tony designed this armor inside a virtual reality simulator called Escape. 
In that digital realm, his mind wasn't limited by the processing speed of a biological brain, allowing him to conceive an armor that defies standard mechanical engineering by using virtual mass to create impossible weaponry. The power output here is meaningless to measure in gigajoules. It was strong enough to kill a celestial, a literal space god. We are talking about energy projection that rivals a supernova. Resilience is equally nonsensical. It withstood attacks that casually shatter planets. It generates infinite power, but the strain it puts on the fabric of reality is the real consumption. And the cost? It cost Tony his peace of mind. The suit was so terrifyingly powerful, so capable of absolute destruction, that Tony self-destructed it immediately after the battle. He deemed it too dangerous for anyone including himself, to possess. It wasn't a tool. It was an extinction event waiting to happen. Verdict, power, 11 out of 10. Energy, 10 out of 10. Resilience, 10 out of 10. Cost, 0 out of 10. With a score that breaks our calculator, this stands alone in tier God. It is the only suit on this list destroyed by its creator out of fear, proving that with enough intelligence, a human can kill a deity. It is the apex of this list. Looking at the data from the Mark I to the Godbuster, the science reveals one undeniable truth. Tony Stark's superpower wasn't money or metal, but the obsessive refusal to accept human limitations. He engineered his way from a cave to the cosmos, turning his own mortality into a weapon. If you want to see us break down the physics of Captain America's shield next, hit that subscribe button and let us know in the comments.